not. There we go. All right. Good evening, everyone. Good to have you with us on Wednesday, November 4th, post-election. I didn't say post-traumatic stress. Um, we we're talking about end times. Five major end time events are, number one, in order. Number one, what's first? What are we waiting for? Rapture. 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 Rapture is number one. Number two, followed by the tribulation. Uh, number three, second coming. Second coming is um, in two phases. Uh, that's why the rapture is considered phase one. Second coming is phase two. Uh, not everyone maybe holds to that kind of terminology, but second coming is, I believe, at the end of the tribulation. After that is a millennial kingdom. Millennium stands for thousand, so thousand year reign of Christ. And then the eternal state. And we have been parked on for quite some time. Um, Determining when does the rapture happen in correlation with the tribulation. Uh, Pre-trib rapture is what I hold to and, and have, as I've studied this, have not found any reason to change. Uh, that means the rapture comes first, we're out of here, tribulation starts. End of seven years, Christ returns in glory and sets things right. Uh, some hold to the mid-trib. There is some significance, and we've seen that as we've talked about the Antichrist. We've seen that there is something that happens at the midway point, uh, three and a half year point of the tribulation, and uh, uh, the covenant is broken. The, the man of sin uh, sets, him up, sets himself up in the temple, proclaims to be God, uh, uh, abomination or of desolation. He does this uh, uh, sacrifice. Uh, and then the post-tribulation, uh, there are those that hold to the, the belief that they will go through the entire tribulation and be raptured out at the end. It was uh, kind of interesting. I had a conversation with a friend. And, and what's, uh, obviously, there are saved people in each of these three categories. You know, there are. It's, it's, there are, I believe there are born-again people that are post-trip. I believe there are born-again people that are mid-trip. I think they're, I don't think they quite got it right. Uh, if I did, I'd switch, okay? But um, regardless, it's not like, uh, well, if I believe in mid-trip and I'm wrong, God doesn't leave them there to, you know, if pre-trip, they're going to be raptured out at the time when God's rapture is, regardless if they got the theology correct or not, if they are truly born again. Um, so it's not like, oh, okay, you post-tribbers, you've got to wait, you've got to go through the whole thing. That's what you wanted. That's what you chose to believe. You're going to... No, God doesn't operate that way. And, you know, when you think of, and I, I hope that as you listen to Christian radio and as you, you know, are here Wednesday night and you hear Sunday and you hear preaching and you hear other preaching on the radio and you read your, your Bible, I, I, you should be growing in understanding of doctrine and understanding things and kind of how things fit together more and more. And so, um, you know, to think that someone has to have a perfect understanding of everything to get to heaven is a works-oriented salvation, right? I mean, uh, you, you just think of how many things you've learned since you've been saved, and hopefully it's a lot. And it's like, wow, I'm, I'm, these are wonderful things I know now, uh, but I'm glad I didn't have to understand them all before I got saved. Uh, you know, when you think of children, they don't understand union with Christ. Any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. creature. They don't understand union and, you know, all those kind of things. So, uh, again, uh, at some point, we will all find out if which is correct. And I believe biblically, and I, I believe from Scripture we've been looking at, and precedence that there is a, a stronger case for pre-trib than there is for really any other uh, view. Okay, Second Thessalonians chapter 2. We might be there for a while yet. Uh, today and next week for sure. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. And again, I like to... Uh, make sure you're tracking on what's going on. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse number 1. Now we beseech you, we exhort you, we beg you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, 
That's talking about the rapture. I beseech you, based on that, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. So they, they were troubled about what? They were troubled about what in verse 2? Missing. Hmm? Missing. Missing out on the rapture. They thought that the day of Christ... Oh. Now remember, the, the rapture is different than the day of Christ. And we saw that in 1 Thessalonians 4 and 5. Uh, the rapture occurs first... Uh, the tribulation, which is, uh, Paul calls it the day of Christ here, but the, the tribulation, or the day of the Lord, uh, which is over and over again in the Old Testament, it is judgment. Judgment, judgment, judgment is the day of the Lord. And Paul's like, don't be alarmed. You, like, the day of Christ is here, it's not come yet. You have not missed out. And, you know, I've said this before, but good reminder, um, if they were going to go through the tribulation, Paul wouldn't have said, don't be troubled. He would have said, good job. We're there. We're there. Hang on to the end. You know, he didn't say that. He's like, don't be troubled like you missed it. You didn't miss it because it hasn't happened yet. We're not. The day of Christ is not here. Uh, don't be deceived. Verse 3, let no man deceive you by any means. For that day, the day of Christ, day of the Lord, shall not come Except, and then there's these two things. They're coming, falling away first, the falling away, and then the man of sin will be revealed. Verse number four, uh, here the man of sin, man of lawlessness, son of perdition. Here's some of his characteristics, verse four. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshiped. So he po opposes God uh, he exalts himself against God. He wants to be worshipped. And so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Um, not sure if you have the chart that I gave you last week or not. I want to, I, I don't want to spend a lot of time on it, but um, I want to cruise through these characteristics just in a, in a way of reminder. And then I have a, um, uh, an email that I received from someone, uh, no one I know, um, and a very lengthy email, and, and, but I wanna read bits and pieces of it to you because they have identified, in their opinion, who the Antichrist is. And so uh, it is, we can, what, what kind of what, why I wanna read it to you is for us to, okay, we've been learning about the Antichrist, and for us to kind of see if we can shoot holes in the argument of what they are presenting as the Antichrist. So, uh, you know, it's, it's a, a group discussion kind of thing. But uh, so on that chart, uh, Little Horn, which is uh, that the Antichrist, uh, many hold to. Uh, characteristics are on the left. I'm not going to read uh, the references, but he is affiliated uh, with a beast that has 10 horns. Uh, in Daniel chapter 2, Daniel's vision, uh, or Nebuchadnezzar's vision, I'm sorry, Nebuchadnezzar's vision that, that Daniel interpreted, the great image, uh, it was, you know, there were 10 toes uh, that were referred to, uh, referred to, sorry. Uh, mouth that speaks great things. Uh, eyes in this horn, possibly indicating intelligence, uh, proud and arrogant against God, persecute God's people, uh, reference in some way to three and a half years. It's interesting, that's in Daniel 7, Daniel 9, and Revelation that we looked at last week, uh, will be destroyed by God and or God's kingdom. Uh, confirms a covenant with the Jews for a week. Uh, sets himself in temple as God, desiring worship. We just talked about that. Uh, empowered by Satan. Uh, we see that in verse 9 in 2 Thessalonians 2. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan... Uh, with all power and signs and lying wonders. And then uh, the last characteristic I have is signs and wonders are performed. So I want to, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you right off the bat that this individual believes that President Trump is the Antichrist. Okay? Um, and as I was reading through it, I 
could kind of, he was, he was dropping little hints so I could kind of see where he was going with this. But, uh, and it, the, the thing I don't know is how much it's, it's a, he says right in here, uh, sitting here working and listening to sermons on YouTube. Uh, I wonder if we aren't much closer than many think and then copy and pasted below. And then, so I don't know how much of the copy and paste is his or, I mean, none of it. My, I, I just don't know. Um, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but uh, bits and pieces of when a certain world leader was elected president, so he doesn't say it's Trump till the end, okay? I'm just telling you up front. Uh, when a certain world leader was elected president, prophecy, prophecy expert and author Tom Horn, uh, I'm not familiar with him, uh, was interviewed on Christian TV in 2016, parentheses, Google it, where he said top Orthodox rabbis were looking into his lineage to see if they could trace it back to King David. Okay, uh, first of all, we have not found anything. Now, I've, I've heard people suggest that the Antichrist is a Jew. Uh, I've heard that biblically. I have not seen a reference to that. I, I have not seen it yet. Uh, if you know it, please let me know. But I, I've not seen it yet. And so anyway, uh, there were, when, when President Trump was elected in 2016, they dug into his background to see if he was possibly a uh, Jew. Um, or trace it back to King David. Uh, and then more than a few of the top rabbi, rabbis believed he could be the Messiah. Uh, if they crown him as Messiah, then he would be the Antichrist because obviously the real Messiah has already come and was crucified and is uh, in heaven. Um, fast forward four years, on February 20th, 2020, Israeli Times, uh, Israel's top Orthodox rabbis say they know who the Messiah is. They are meeting and speaking with him. And the human, so the, you, you don't understand, um, or maybe you don't, the Jews as a nation don't believe the Messiah came. They rejected the Messiah that was very much, I mean, Isaiah 50, if, if you can't get from Isaiah 53 that he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for, if, if you can't see Christ in Isaiah 53, uh, you know, you're not being fair to Scripture. You're not being honest, in my opinion. But anyway, they rejected Christ as a Messiah. They still think there is a Messiah coming, okay? Um, so that's, uh, and so they think the Messiah, they're already meeting and speaking with him. He'll reveal himself soon, uh, just needs a little bit more political power before he steps forth. Uh, Messiah is already making changes in the world, another insinuation that he is a political leader. Um, they are hoping, or they are going to love him and crown him Messiah. He'll be their best friend. They've even fashioned a crown and robe for him in 2020. Uh, but wait, Paul says, and this goes wrong uh, right with what we were reading. Uh, wait, Paul says something takes faith place first, and he ties it to the false Messiah. Listen to this. That's right. The funniest part of this situation Christians forsake the true teaching of Jesus and are the ones who place the man of sin into power. Uh, the same guy top rabbis believe may be the Messiah. Now, just pause here a little bit. What, what we know is that from what we read, the ten, ten horns, right? Then the eleventh horn comes. That's from the... Roman Empire, okay, we, we saw very plainly it was the horns and our kings, and so it's very plainly from the Roman Empire. Um, so it, it comes out of there, and the Roman Empire is the one that pushes him up and, get, you know, he takes over three of the ten horns, and to say Christians put him in power is just not it's not biblically supported. You can't uh, do that. In fact, Christians will be watching him come into, I mean, that's what we just read. And Paul said, you didn't miss the rapture? You didn't miss the rapture? The man of sin has not been revealed. Uh, so possibly his argument is, 
you know, revealed means he could be around, and we just don't know him as the Antichrist. So that may be the angle that he's taken there. Um, here's another one. Paul used adjective great because it will be the majority, including mainstream Christian leadership. Well, we read in Daniel, great, 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 and it was the things that he was speaking, and then we eventually saw it was things that he was speaking against God. Mm -hmm. So it, it really had the great, really didn't have anything to do with how many people were supporting him or not supporting. It was the things that he boasted about and spoke and who he, uh, who he was against. Um, everyone else is shocked at who the conservative Christians are holding up as their leader might even describe it in the mainstream media several times as cult-like. Only one currently elected president where top Christian leaders lay hands on him, pray over him, uh, declare he single-handedly saved Christianity. Okay, I have not heard anybody say President Trump has single-handedly uh, saved Christianity. I've not heard that. Um, so that's, um, that's an opinion. Uh, do... I told you, I think, um, I, I know my wife and I, I can speak for my wife and I, we have prayed more for President Trump than we prayed for all the presidents before that combined. I mean, I'm just telling you, I'm just being honest, shame on us, we're supposed to pray for all those in authority, and I should have been praying for presidents my whole adult Christian life, but I have prayed more for him. Um, but I certainly don't look at him as the savior of Christianity, I certainly don't look at him uh, as the Messiah. Um, <clears throat> then he goes on to say, the world has never seen this sort of weird, freaky religious stuff with an elected leader or past president, especially not with a man of this particular character. By their fruits, you shall know them. I preached on that Sunday on its, yes, there's personality, but then there's policy. He is not our pastor. He, we're, we're, you know, what are his policies and what policies support biblical teaching and, and what don't? Um, he, he's not our role model. Uh, neither one of them should be. You don't, you don't look for uh, the president of the United States. If, if the president of the United States is your role model for Christianity, you have, you're in trouble on a number of fronts. Uh, but... Uh, <clears throat> The great apostasy, and I thought this was interesting, so the falling away, it's, you know, our King James says a falling away, it's actually the, the great uh, falling away, uh, might not be a willful falling away, but a much more subtle and sinister falling away. Christians buy into the lies and delusions until it's too late. All news is fake news unless it's positive in regards to the man they've chosen. Okay, I'm going to skip some of this. Um, in fact, some might describe the Antichrist as turning on everyone eventually because it's all about him. He eventually declares himself as God to be worshipped. We just read that in 2 Thessalonians 2. Um, looking around the world stage, there's one political leader who fits the, Bibli the Bible's prophetic descriptions of the Antichrist. I just want to interject here. There were... Uh, Nero, there, there were Roman emperors that at the time they were certain that was the Antichrist. Okay, Nero was, Nero, Nero if I remember right, kicked one of his wives to death. Um, he, Nero was horrible, okay? And so they thought he was the Antichrist. Um, so to suggest that you know, there's never been a political leader as wicked as our as President Trump is just not being true to history. Um, okay, uh, one political uh, look around the world, it, it would seem like almost uh, uh, almost perfect fit, including direct ties to Israel's top leadership through marriage. There's only one world leader who has made it abundantly clear he's crazy enough to think he could be the Messiah. Uh, might have been described by numerous, numerous clinical psychologists, including family members, as narcissist, psychopath. Uh, the Bible gives many clues regarding the coming false messiah. Rises out of the sea. Gentile nations. One Jewish sect even claims he'll come from New York. Okay? 
Well, the, he comes from the Roman Empire. We, it, it says that very plainly in Daniel a couple times. It's the ten, it, you know, it's so the, the, and I should, probably the proper way to say it is the revived Roman Empire. Okay, the Roman Empire was huge at one time, um, but so a revived coalition of ten countries over there, somewhere in that part of the world, is going to happen at some point. Which ten there are, um, sometime we might get into those guesses. I don't know that it's important, but to suggest that he comes from the United States and as specific as New York is, re is really uh, biblically stretching things. Um, <clears throat> okay, tall man. Uh, I thought that was kind of interesting. Uh, President Trump is supposedly 6'3", okay? Uh, and, and then it's like there's a lot of, well, he's probably only 6'1". Melania is 5'11", wears heels and often looks taller than him. They got some recent pictures of Barron. It's like, whoa, that boy is tall, you know? So, but, so anyway, um, President Trump is two inches taller than Vice President Biden, I guess. Um, Tall man, mouth like a lion, feet like a bear, uh, but makes himself great in his own mind, uh, comes to power through peaceful means, election, with a small group of people, parentheses, does not win majority, but wins the election, uh, includes intrigue, foreign help. He is not given honor of the kingdom. Uh, majority despise him, horrible coverage from the mainstream press, uh, kills, here's one, Kills many during time of peace, parentheses, plague. Uh, focus on Israeli, on Israeli peace deal, both Old and New Testament apocalypse. Um, loved by Israel. Um, man of sin, parentheses, has never asked for forgiveness. Google it. Um, son of perdition, lawless one, does not worship God of his fathers. Uh, and then I'll, I'll skip this, but... Um, Daniel may have even provided his name, Little Horn, and in original texts referred to a musical instrument, small version of the trumpet, parentheses <laughs> Trump. So anyway, uh, a few a few holes there, but I, I guess uh, hopefully. You recognize, you know, because of this study of the Antichrist, you recognize some of those things that maybe you wouldn't have before and said, okay, wait a minute. You know, um, you know the, I, I think there is some, um, there will come a point, he's not revealed until certain things happen, okay? But it's not like he's born at, 50 and then becomes an anime. You, you know what I'm saying? He, it will be a person, it will be a man who is alive at a certain point, who is unknown for a certain length of time. Uh, it's interesting the uh, revelation or revealed there in verse 6, revealed is the same word um, of revealing Christ at the, uh, at the rapture, if I, I remember right. But I want to I wanna now... Um, Go to verse, okay, good, we have time. Uh, verse number five. So 2 Thessalonians 2, verse number five. Uh, remember, you know, one of the commentators pointed out, it's like, you can almost, you can almost hear the impatience of Paul uh, in this verse. He had instructed them. I, I don't want you to be ignorant about the rapture, 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18. But 1 Thessalonians 5, the times and the seasons, you don't, I don't need to write it to you because you already know that the day of the Lord's going to come as a thief of the night. So he, he taught them on the rapture. They already knew about the day of the Lord. And now he's, now he's like, you're worried, you're bothered, you're alarmed, you're concerned, you're confused, you think you missed out. Um, I told you when I was with you, you know, verse number 5. Remember ye not that when I was with, yet with you, I told you these things? Man, you know, if we could have, if he would have bothered writing that for us. <laughs> some of these things we, some of these questions, there were things. I, I, I said this before, I'm sure. 
the Thessalonians understood chapter 2 way more than we can because they had information from Paul that filled in the blanks so that it was it, it was to them at that time so everything made more sense than we we have to kind of piece things together we don't have what Paul had shared with them in verse number five so we know they knew more than we did because of what he had shared with them so now verse number six and now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. So first of all, that he might be revealed is talking about the man of sin. Okay? So now you know what withholdeth. Uh, the word withholdeth there is kind of interesting. There's uh, maybe you have a note. Anybody have a footnote about maybe another different word? Or Sharon, you have a different version, right? Yeah. What what is what do you have? We're on verse six. six. And now you know what is holding him back, so that he may be revealed at the proper time. Okay. So hold. So withholdeth. Withholdeth. The King James says holding back is one trend. You have a note. Or Schofield says with. Or that which restrains. Restrains. Restraining. Restraining. A lot of versions have uh, restrain. Holding them back. Uh, the New International, New Living Translation, International Standard. Uh, restraining. Uh, holding back. Restraining idea. Uh, English Standard Version. Berean. Breathe, breathe, sorry. Study Bible. New American Standard. New King James. King James 2000 Bible. And others. So there's a number of them that say, uh, and now ye know what... With restrains that he might be revealed in his time. Okay, I am going to give you a short Greek lesson here, uh, hopefully in enough English that you can get it. Um, when I took Greek, it was interesting. So I'm with, I'm, I'm probably in my fifties, so I am thirty years removed from college English, okay? So I'm learning participles and all this stuff in Greek, plus what is a participle in English, you know? I mean, I'm, um, so I, I, some of it was, yeah, anyway. Uh, so here, definite article, okay? And you, bear with me, I'm gonna, you're, you're gonna find out why I'm doing this in just a minute. Um, definite article in English, the word the is the definite article, the, okay? Um, when, and, and it indicates something specific. Give me the hammer, you know, is a hammer that's somewhere in proximity, not any old hammer, give me the hammer. Uh, give me the red hammer, the blue hammer is too small, the, the. Um, please give me the nail, okay? You're, you're referring to something specific. That's a definite article. You have one particular thing in mind. Indefinite is in English, a. Uh, give me a book. All right. If I said, Don, give me a book. Look at all the books he has behind me. Any one of those books would do because I'm saying, give me a book. Give me the book with the pretty cover. Well, that would, you know, narrow it down. So, so definite article is the, and it's referring to something specific. Indefinite is, it's not definite. It's general. Okay. Um, in, so that's in English. In, it's different in Greek, and I'll get to that in a minute. Something else that's different in Greek is that nouns, pen, leaf, whatever that's properly called. Um, <laughs> nouns have different, in, in the Greek, nouns actually have what's called a gender. Okay, So there are male words, they end a certain way in Greek. There are certain words that are female words in Greek. They have a different kind of ending. And then there are words that are neuter or neutral, where they also have a distinct kind of ending. So you can look at a Greek word and you can tell if it's a masculine word or a feminine word or a neuter word. Okay, so they have gender. We don't, we don't have anything like that, all right? We know male, uh, the word male and the word boy and the word man is 
male, but uh, we can't tell from the ending. It's not, you know, any different. Um, another thing about the Greek is that the gender doesn't always make natural gender sense. And here's what I mean by that. The word for sinner is our mind. If you were to guess, you would say, well, sinner, sh sinner should be neutral because it's men and women, right? That, I mean, but sinner in Greek is masculine. It has a masculine ending, okay? Sin, which again, you think would be neuter, it would be both. Sin is female. It doesn't mean only men are sinners, and it doesn't mean sin is only in women. It's just that's how the Greeks decide to formulate that word. All right. So far, so good? <laughs> the Greek has a special article. Think the. They have a special the for male words. It's a different the than the the for female words than the the for neuter words. Okay, so there's three thes. It gets more complicated than that, but, but I'll, I'll just leave it at that. Okay, so there's three thes. The the for male words, female words, neuter words. Why does all this matter? Glad you asked. You didn't ask, but I'm telling you. All right, verse number six. And now ye know what withholdeth. In the Greek, the what is from a, not a male word, not a female word, from a neutral word. Okay? It's, it's what? It's not he or she. It's what? Now you know what restrains. It. You know, it's it. It. Okay? You know what restraints. So it, it gives the idea of it's like a, a, a restraint, like a force as opposed to a person, right? It's, it's a, it's a uh, neuter thing. Uh, verse number seven. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth, gets, guess what? Letter, letteth is the same word as withholdeth. It's restrain. So the, the withhold in verse 6 is the same word as let in verse 7. So in one place, it's calling it a force and neutral. But in verse 7, it is a he. So it, it, it uses the he, the, instead of the neutral, the. Are you following me? It's calling, it, so, so Paul writes in one place, he's calling it a it, and another place, or a force, in another place he's calling it a he. Okay, very, very, very unusual to refer to the same thing with two different does, all right? Doesn't happen very often at all. But it does happen. And it is a huge clue as to what this passage is all about. So if you got a pen and paper handy, here's some verses to, to look at before next week, if you think of it. I won't quiz you. You won't have to memorize them. Uh, Genesis, Genesis, sorry, no, not Genesis. <laughs> Starts with a J. No, it doesn't even start with it. It starts with a J, not a G. All right, try this again. John 14, 26. John 15, 26. John 16, 13, and 14. I'll read them again one more time. John 14, 26. John 15, 26. John 16, 13, and 14. So these are examples where it is, you don't have to know Greek, it's, but you'll see there's an example of where it's switched up from something neutral, 
to a heat. And uh, you'll see what that's all about. So any, any questions, comments? Was it, um, just think, go ahead. How did they ever translate the Bible in Greek? And, you know, I, and, and what's, in what really gets strange. interesting with the Greek, and I, I literally know just enough to make me dangerous, okay? Um, I, I wish, I, I mean, I took three years of Greek and still, uh, because in the Greek, um, the, and I, I just wish I had the time to really learn it more and better, but you, you'll look at a, at a passage, we'll all look at a passage in English, and there might be four verbs, okay? An action word, four verbs. Well, in the Greek, one of them is the main verb. It's the main one, and all the other, the other three support that main verb somehow. So, uh, and it, it's like a way of doing something or, or a, you know, a manner or how or the result of doing something. And so, uh, in the, the, the point I'm trying to make in the Greek, there are like ready-made outlines sometimes if you really know the Greek versus we can take a verse and we can, we can make a verb be the primary point when it's actually a subpoint of a subpoint. You know, we can get it wrong where, um, you know, it, it's, it's, there's built-in outlines in there, but it's, it's, uh, it just, it takes a lot, a lot of work. Uh, now I know why I had so much fun in English with verbs and participles yeah. and all that other junk. Infinitives <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. and moods and all that. So any, any other questions? All right. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. I thought somebody else. Oh. Had one. Okay. Um, one of the things in verse 7. Okay. Um, For the secret power of lawlessness is already at work, but the one who now holds it back, which is general neutral, gender neutral, will continue to do so until he, the lawlessness, is taken out of the way. Mm -hmm. Okay. From that, I had kind of discerned that it was the Holy Spirit. You are absolutely, I believe you're absolutely correct. Yep, that the most, now there are some, there's, there's some really, there's like a half a dozen ways people look at that. I mean, half a dozen, dozen different suggestions. Uh, but I believe the Holy Spirit has the, the scripture, comparing scripture to scripture and even some of the Greek and um, that the Holy Spirit makes the most sense. Right, um, okay. So good, yeah. Uh, you know, there's this, this supernatural withholding. Uh, it is a restraining evil. Uh, there's some that suggest it's someone that's evil. It's like, well, why would evil hold back evil? Um, but it, I believe the Holy Spirit, there would... We just finished next week's lesson already. Thanks, Sharon. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you took so long. I just get to the point. <laughs> Very good. No. Sorry. No, no, that's good. And 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 uh, no, that's a. Um, I would say that's a common view in our circle, but not every. I mean, they really struggle with why the why the two different uses of the. Why one has the neuter and why the, the masculine, they just have a hard time uh, with that. And, and so some will say uh, one is the power of the Roman government and the other is the emperor. So the, the power is the, for, you know, the force of the government and then one is the individual. And so they have all kinds of different uh, ideas on that. So. Well, it was even suggested that the Jewish nation was one of the power struggles. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's, like I said, there's about six different ones that uh, I think the, the Holy Spirit makes the most sense for a couple of different reasons. But any other questions? I don't have to come next week. <laughs> yeah, you do. You want to you hit the button there, Art, for us, please? <laughs>